We hear it all the time that women are each other's own worst enemies. In light of this, activist Alison Jo is reaching out to the women of the nation in commemoration of this past Sunday's International Women's Day, asking them to realize the strength that women possess when they work together. In a bid to be inclusive, Jo says the occasion should not be seen as a time to bash men, but rather to forge partnerships with them to create a dynamic team. International Women's Day is a great opportunity for women the world over to celebrate their womanhood. This is the sentiment of women's advocate Alison Jean. The world observed the big occasion on Sunday the 8th of March. Jean said it is important for women to recognize that whilst they fight for a place in the world, whilst also trying to make a living, raise families and be pillars for friends and loved ones, there is nothing wrong in taking time out for one's self. We must reflect internally on ourselves we need to take time off and celebrate self jean highlighted another matter which has been an age-old fight for women in general no matter the age race or creed and that is infighting she said there truly is unity in numbers and so she called on women to unite rather than to fight another thing too um that we need to do is to support each other as women um you hear so many times in, in work situations, in the neighborhood, that we fight among each other. I'll be honest with you, I think in my career, my biggest um, opponents have been women. I, have, I, I, I worked in a male-dominated um, sector, which is an infrastructure, and I got more respect from men than I did from women. I'm sad. I'm sorry to say that, but I have to be frank. That's how it's been. Um, so I think the awareness of International Women's Day is extremely important. It's not just about sending in little um, photos in the morning, Happy International Women's Day but it's really to develop a greater sisterhood. Jean said there is a flip side to the momentous day, which is the need to pay homage to men and the positive role that they play in the lives of women daily. During our own, our own celebrations of Women's Day, we have a tendency to reduce ma men. And I do not believe that this ought to be. We still need to recognize the role of men and women in our society. I believe our men need to be stronger. Our men need to show much more responsibility. But at the same time, we as women need to see ourselves as supporters of men. So we need both genders in our society. And I do not believe that we need to be competing with men versus women and vice versa. Ja was a featured guest speaker at the Make It Happen Foundation's Tea Party for Women, which was held at Government House on Sunday, March 8th. She said the event was one of inspiration as she met with a group of phenomenal women. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I'm Rochelle Gonzalez. Over 300 women gathered at Government House on International Women's Day in glamorous pink outfits for tea at high noon, as they say. The event, dubbed Tea and Testimony, was a fundraiser for the Women's Support Center of the Nurses Association and served as an opportunity to be inspired by outstanding women in society. It was a flurry of pink on Sunday 8th March as hundreds of women gathered at the government house in their Sunday best for tea and testimony. A charity event to raise funds for the Nurses Association's Women's Support Center. Tea and Testimony was organized by the Make It Happen Foundation, spearheaded by Raquel Dubule Chastney, the wife of Prime Minister Aaron Chastney. Dubule Chastney said the event was a chance for women to engage with and listen to testimonials from women who have overcome many seemingly impossible circumstances and are now in positions of power. The purpose is really to bring women together, um, for women to hear their stories, to uplift and inspire ladies today to celebrate International Women's Day and to make some funds for the Nurses Association. The event was attended by more than 300 women, including nurse and performing artist Linda Chocolate Berthier. She viewed the event as an opportunity for women to find common ground and draw inspiration from each other 
as they navigate life's challenges. We just know that there are some powerful women today who are going to be giving us some inspiring, tear-jerking and motivation speeches. And some of them will be talking about real life experiences. And that's going to help the ladies understand, hey, I'm not in this alone. The struggle is not one I'm facing alone. We have other sisters to support us. And that is what it's about today. The lineup of speakers did not disappoint as the ladies gave powerful testimonies of their lives, losses and triumphs. Dubule Chasne says, while events of this magnitude take a lot of planning, she hopes it can be an annual endeavor. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Jenny Gonzaga. The government of St. Lucia's trade export promotion agency, Export St. Lucia, is currently conducting one of its biggest trade missions to date within the Isles of Grenada and St. Vincent. The mission, which runs from the 9th to the 13th of March, is a direct result of two in-market research missions conducted in 2019. It provides a regime of support to eligible goods produced in LDCs on a temporary basis to help boost their competitiveness and their level of participation in intra-regional trade in the CSME. The mission comprises of 12 companies, namely Caribbean Awning Production Company Limited, Fruitsea Foods Limited, Toilet Manufacturers Limited, St. Lucia Distillers, Winwood and Leeward Brewery, Tenderoni Limited, H&L Environmental Services, Caribbean Metals, Natmed, Antilla Brewing, Abbey's Exotic Blends, Shop D Caribbean and Koch Jewelry. The contingent is scheduled to have meetings with partners, potential buyers and government officials in the neighboring isles. In other news, management of Lucian Blue Ocean Seafood Inc. is keeping their eyes set on the future with plans to totally revitalize the outlook of the local fisheries industry. So says the director of the company, Karen Peter, who spoke on the successfully hosted Independent Seafood Festival last month. Amanda Fakwa tells us more. In acknowledging the challenges faced by the sector, which has for decades been a great contributor to the overall agriculture economy, with its stable fisheries livelihoods around the island, Ms. Peter insists that the fisheries, coastal and marine subsector is at a brink of massive growth. As she explains, the shortcomings of the past and limitations of the present has only fueled her management team's determination to become creative in carving out plans to showcase the diversely rich fisheries product we have in St. Lucia. From the uniqueness of our fisher folk to fishing as an art and our marine coastal resources as an income generator. For her, it all starts with a decision to go beyond what we know and describe our fisheries sector to be. We need to start putting the technology in agriculture. I know we've started, but we need to do it on a bigger scale. But the technology in agriculture, and far from that, that to start educating the younger ones, that is not a blue collar manual where, you know, it's a dirty job and you feel ashamed of it. Because think about it, farming, agriculture, and so is the billionaires in the world. That's, That's okay. what they do. And we have to now learn from them. We don't have to reinvent the wheel because the technologies are there. And we just have to inject it in our own economy and push, this, particularly the blue economy, in terms of the way they fish. We need to be able to get them to go out longer, a week, two weeks, so they can come back with enough so we don't have to import. We don't have to import that product. What we want to do is export the product. And that is one of our mandates as well. This juncture in time is seen as a perfect opportunity to uplift the fisheries sector. Ms. Peter says her ideas will support the Agriculture Ministry's plans to reframe the agritourism policies and will also be an addition to St. Lucia's ecotourism offerings. The first thing I saw was the experience of a bayfront. So I quickly went on to, apart from having the fish business, we need to do an entertainment aspect of the business. I saw tourists, I saw cruise passengers, I saw ships side, I saw a lobster tank, a fish tank, you choose what you want. I saw restaurant bar, I saw an after work lime, a weekend lime, local, creole, I saw carnival activities, independent, calypso. I, I just saw it all. It's not only a fish business and we have to do it different. And we do have the government support, which is critical. Lucian Blue Ocean Seafoods Incorporated is the restructured St. Lucia Fish Marketing Corporation and it has a vision to strategically place the island's fishery sector on a stronger footing. From the Ministry of Agriculture, this is Amanda Faye Clark reporting. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News Sports and Weather are coming up after the break.